So welcome to uh, like the fourth part of time speed distance. This is we are doing like the arithmetic playlist. But remember one thing, uh, we are in this like the fifth part of TST. Uh, so today we'll discuss more on relative speed. So we have done already average speed, the proportionality, the basic understanding of TST. Now it's time to start with something new, which is like the relative speed. Now in case of relative speed, what exactly we are going to do? So think about this thing. This is a relative speed. You can see this thing like this is going. So whenever you are like going the same thing, it's like this, if you say. So here, what we can do uh, more or less, that is we can use the concept of relative speed here. Now you can see like if he's moving from this point to this point. So if you can start like this, so you can see like they are moving from this point to this point. So the distance between them is already increasing. So if you see from here, so you see these two cars are basically move, moving. The two cars or like cars and the trains, they are basically moving. But if you think about it in such a little bit different way, right? If you think about it in a little bit different way, let's say you are sitting here. So you also see this car is moving, right? Moving away from you, right? So this car is moving away. So you can see this car, this person from here can see this car or train is moving away from him. And if you say again the same thing, and this person is also seeing this person is moving away from him. So this person's perception about this car is moving in this direction. The person's perception of this car is moving in this direction. So that's why it is called relative speed. So it depends on like the things which are moving, right? Now think about a case like this. Let's say, think about this as a thing. So they are moving in, let's say now, same direction. They're moving in same direction. So let's say the speed is here 60 kmph. And here this is 40 kmph. Now what is the relative speed? So the person who stands here, he will see this train is moving towards him. And the person who stands here, he will see this train is moving towards him. But the person who stands here, he sees like both these things like this train is moving towards this, this train is moving towards this direction. So but the percept speed is basically the relative speed. So if I say the relative speed when they are in the same direction, that is called the relative speed. So in this case, the relative speed is 60 minus 40, which is 20. So I can say one thing, if this distance between them is basically traveled by 20 kilometers per hour, right? 20 kilometers per hour. Why? Because this is going in 60 kilometers per hour. This is going in 40 kilometers per hour. So the entire distance between them, this is basically being decreased. So this train is trying to reach this train. And this distance is distributed in this speed because this is moving 40, this is moving 60. So the 60 minus 40, 20 kilometers per hour, it's basically responsible for covering the in-between distance. So remember, like in case of relative speed, the relative distance is also basically being calculated with the help of relative speed. Now, if they're moving in opposite direction, if they're moving in opposite direction, so one thing we can say, so if they're moving in opposite direction, so this train is moving there, this train is moving here, right? So now one thing we can suggest from here, Right, the one thing, the very one thing we can suggest here, like if the speed is, let's say 60, again, kilometer per hour, the speed is 40 kilometer per hour. The relative speed in this case is 60 plus 40, which is 100 kilometer per hour. So when they're moving in opposite direction or in towards each other, the relative speed is basically being added. So here this and this is added and it goes to 100 kilometer per hour. So this is like the beauty of this kind of things, right? So and the distance between them is also traveled by this speed only. So remember this. So the distance between them is traveling by this speed, this 100 km per hour. So if you see, like if I uh, just give you one uh, common uh, understanding about this, let's say this is two things. So one is here, one is here. And let's say the distance is 1200 km. And the speed here is 200 km per hour of this. And this is 100 km per hour. Right, so the question is when will they meet? The answer is 1200 divided by 200 plus 100. So they will meet after four hours, right? Now, if this train is moving in this direction, so when this faster train will catch the smaller, slower train, the answer is 1200 divided by 200 minus 100. So the answer is 12 hours. So this is the basic concept of the relative speed, like how basically we are using the concept of relative speed to solve this type of question, right? So let's go for the next one then. So the next thing is, let's say the distance between two cities A and B is 300 km. James starts from A towards B at 7 a.m. at the speed of 60 km per hour. Arnold starts from B towards A at 8 a.m. at a speed of 40 km per hour. At what time will they cross each other? 
So if you want to solve this type of question, so the distance between two cities is given, that is 300 kilometers. So the distance is given, that is 300 kilometer, let's say, right? And what is the speed it is given? That is 60 kilometer per hour and 40 kilometer per hour. So if it starts at 7 a.m., let's say this is James and this is Arnold, that starts at 8 a.m. Now we need to understand at 8 a.m., where is the position? At 8 a.m., where is the position? So this train is uh, basically traveling in the speed of this 60 or like this, James is traveling in the speed of, uh, let's say 60. So in one hour, James will travel 60 kilometer, right? So at 8 a.m., the distance between them is not 300 kilometer, it is 240 kilometer. So when will they meet? They meet after 240 divided by 60 plus 40, right? So 60 plus 40, so this is like 2.4 hours. So after 2.4 hours, after 8 a.m., these two guys will meet each other. So that's how we solve this question. So generally remember, whenever we use this thing, we try to make all of these things in a single point, like the single time frame. So that's like the utilization of this. So let's go for the next one. Brad and Pete start running from point A to point B and immediately return to A. When Pete has covered three-fourths of the distance from A to B, he meets Brad, who is on his... Uh, so like, let's read the question. Who is on his, like, the distance from A to B, he, uh, who is on his return lap? What is the ratio of their speeds at which Brad and Pete run? So if we solve this question, like, how exactly we will approach to solve this type of question? Now, you can see the question is, Brad and Pete started running from a point A to point B and immediately returned to the A. When Pete has covered three-fourths of the distance from A to B, he meets Brad, who is on his return lap. So think about like this way. So this is, let's say, the entire lap, right? So they are meeting here, let's say. That is, Pete is going from this direction and reaching here, and Brad is coming from this direction and meeting it here. So the traveling is, P has covered, Pete has covered how much? Three-fourth, and this one is one-fourth, and Brad has covered the entire one unit plus one by four. So Brad has covered 1 plus 1 by 4, which is 5 by 4. So Brad covered 5 by 4, Pete covered 3 fourth. So what is the ratio of the speed of Brad and Pete? That is 5 by 4 is to 3 by 4. So your answer is 5 is to 3. I hope I have made you understood this one, right? Now let's go for the next question then. So this is like, a, like things about like you can... Uh, see about this is like a one thing about gangs of Vasipur. So this question is developed based on gangs of Vasipur. So let's see the question. At an unknown time, uh, Randhir broke away from the cell. The Sardar Khan noticed Randhir missing from the cell at 11.30. If Randhir had constantly been running in uh, one direction at 60 km per hour and Sardar Khan immediately started going after Randhir in the speed of direction at 8 km per hour and caught Randhir at 3 a.m. Right? So that means he started at 11.30 p.m. and he met Randhir at 3, p, 3 a.m. So how much, how long Sardar is basically traveling? The Sardar is traveling for 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Right? So that is three and a half hours. Now in this three and a half hours, the Sardar is gaining how much distance? Because the speed of Sardar is 80 and Randhir is 60, let's say. Right? So the Relative speed is nothing but 20 because they are moving in the same direction. So that means in three and a half hours, the Sardar is basically covering how much extra distance to reach Randhir. So in three and a half hours into 20, that is the extra distance the Sardar is traveling. So what is it? That is 70 kilometer. So 70 kilometer the Sardar has to travel extra. That means at 11.30 p.m., Randhir is already 70 kilometer away from the point. So if their point Sardar starts here, so at 11.30, Randhir is 70 km away from the Sardar, right? So this 70 km is travelled by Randhir in how much time? That is 70 upon 40, uh, like 60 and 80, I guess. And 80, so that's 70 upon, that is 80 minus 60, so 70 upon 60. So your answer is in 7 upon 6 hours, right? So what is the meaning of 7 upon 6 hours? That is 1 hour, 10 minutes. So when uh, the thief or like the Randhir broke free from the prison or the jail cell, the answer is uh, 11.30 p.m. minus 1 hour 10 minutes. So your answer is 10.20 p.m. So in this time, uh, this guy is basically moving towards this one. 
this the guy broke free the jail so i hope you have understood like how exactly we are solving this type of question so you understand we didn't do a lot of things we just get understand the question understand its premise then we solve it right so this is how exactly we solve questions let's go for the next one a bird sitting on top of a wall spots an approaching train which is 900 km away from the wall at the speed of 20 m per second the bird started flying towards the train, reaches the train and immediately flies back to the wall and again back to the train. It continues this till the train reached the wall and killed the bird, let's say. What is the distance covered by the bird while flying towards the train if the bird flies at a constant speed of 50 meter per second, right? So how to solve this type of question, right? So let's discuss how exactly we are going to solve this question. So to solve this question, so the important thing, what we can do exactly. So let's say, let me solve this thing. So let's say this is like the bird, you can see that it's flying. So the bird is here, let's say, this is the bird. And this is the wall. And this is, let's say the train, right? So the train is moving towards the bird and the bird is also moving towards the train. And the distance between them is 900,000 meter because one kilometer is this amount of meter 9000 meter 900,000 meters right but one thing you need to understand let's say they meet first time for here so the bird is traveling towards here and the train is traveling towards here let's say and the bird comes back here only and in this time let's say the train is here now second time they are meeting let's say here so the bird is traveling towards this point and coming back here let's say third time they are meeting here so bird is coming here and coming back to this direction so what does it mean it means that uh, the major meaning of this thing is the bird, the total distance traveled by the bird towards the train is same as the total distance traveled by the bird towards the wall. So they are basically same. There's no problem in it, right? So if they are basically same, so what can we do after this? That means first we need to understand like how much distance did the bird travel? The first thing you need to understand how much distance did the bird travel? So let's say how to find this. So how much time the train will uh, smash the wall? Because at that entire time the bird is traveling to and fro. The till the train smash the wall or like the reach the wall, the entire time the bird is traveling towards the train and coming back, traveling towards train and coming back. So this is going on continuously. So if I think about this thing as 900,000 meter, so the time taken should be 900,000 900,000 by 20 is the time taken by the train to reach the world. And the, at the, in the same time, the bird flies at the speed 50 meter per second. So this is into 50, right? So that is the total distance traveled by the bird, which is uh, 90, uh, which is nothing but which is nothing but if I say it is 900 kilometer, so it is nothing but 900 into 5 by 2, which is 450, so that is 2250 kilometers. So total distance traveled by the bird is 2250 kilometer. And half of this, it is traveling towards the train and half of this, it is traveling towards the wall. So how much distance traveling towards the wall? The answer is 2250 by 2, which is same as 1125. So this distance, it is traveling towards the wall. This distance, this is traveling towards the train. So hence your answer is nothing but 1125 kilometers. So I hope all of you have understood this. It's a very interesting question and it's a previous year cat question. So one thing you just need to remember in the entire question, like the bird when it's traveling, so if it reach here, it comes back from here. It reach here, meet the train, comes back from here. So that amount, the distance, the bird is traveling towards the train. It is same as the amount of distance the bird is toward, traveling towards the wall. So the major concept of this question, just this. You need to find the total distance traveled by the bird by two. Because half towards the wall, half towards the train. And hence, this is how we solve this question. So let's go for the next one. So a dog stands a point at a distance of 40 meter from A, stands a fox, the dog starts chasing the fox and goes in pursuit of fox 40 meter away. The dog takes 2 meter against 1 meter long leaps of the fox. If the dog takes 2 leaps against the fox's 3, then at what distance from A will the dog catch up with the fox? Now fox is here, here is fox, here is dog, right? And this is 40 meters. And let's say 
the dog will catch the fox here right now the one thing you need to understand from here that's what is the thing about dog and fox so dog takes two leaps each with two meters fox takes three leaps in the same time each with one meter so dog is taking four meters and fox is taking three meters in same time right now they have not asked about the they have not asked about um, like what is the time they are asked about the distance so we are thinking about distance so when the dog travels four meter the fox travels three meter that is given right now you need to understand uh, the dog is standing at point a obviously right so i need to find the entire distance of this so that means the dog has to cover extra 40 meter right so when the dog is covering extra one meter the dog total covers four meter because four minus three when the fox is traveling three meters dog is traveling four meters that means dog is traveling one extra meter when dog travels entire four meters so similarly for 40 meters extra travel the dog has to travel 40 into 4 and your answer is 160 meter so what is your answer 160 meter from a like the dog will catch the fox and hence this is all about it like the relative speed like this is like of all about the time to distance lecture 5 so i hope you are liking this lecture so see you guys in the next video then